Welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalza. I'm Dr. Brad Leaning. I'm Mike Heffernan. Mike Heffernan. Dr. Mike Heffernan is a cardiologist who's joined us. We're going to do some talks about cardiology. We've had some in the past. And for those of you that are new to the channel, we like to incorporate a little bit of humor because everybody knows that laughter is the best medicine. But Paul, what about antibiotics? We wouldn't even be alive, most of us, without antibiotics. Fine, fine. Antibiotics are an important medicine. Everybody knows that laughter is the second best medicine. What about antihypertensives? What's that? Preventing stroke, heart attack, and death. Fine, okay. Okay, antibiotics, hypertensives. Everybody knows that laughter is a close third best medicine. Stop right there, Paul. What about Viagra? Ooh. That is actually a very smart medicine. How does it even know what body part to work on? Yeah, like why doesn't your arm stick straight up in the air after you take it? Okay, fine. Laughter is not even medicine. But laughter is important. You know that, we know that, and that's why we incorporate it into some of our videos. So if you don't like laughter and you don't like jokes, go watch another video. Okay, what are we talking about today? Coronary artery calcium scoring. Coronary artery calcium scoring, also known as CAC. Don't sound that out. Not CAC. Okay. <laughs> no. And this is something that a lot of people have wrote in the comments saying, well, my calcium score is zero. I don't need any treatment. I don't need any medication or my calcium score is really high. We're going to give the skinny on kind of its role and how it can be helpful in potential treatment of your coronary artery disease. So take it away, Dr. Heffernan. Okay. Um, what is it? So actually, let's go back and say okay. why we're why we even interested in why this. Why do we care? Right? Um, so we have lots of us. Mm -hmm. I think none of us here have had a heart attack, fortunately, no. right? But we're all wondering, you know, are we at risk of having a heart attack? Sure. And so there are lots of people out there who are worried about having a heart attack, appropriately so, and you might have a family history or other risk factors. And wouldn't it be nice to know if you're at increased risk, because if you were, then might you be able to do something about it to reduce your risk. So it's all about, in, you know, in, in the field of cardiology, is a lot of gaming about risk stratification. Who's high risk, who's medium risk, who's low risk, and then we know how best to treat you to reduce your risk. So we've got scoring systems. Okay. Um, most of the scoring systems that we have are actually just based on clinical factors. How old are you? What's your gender? What's your blood pressure? What, your, what are your cholesterol numbers? Those are kind of typical things that we would enter into an algorithm to say, oh, okay, well, here's your risk. Mm -hmm. Now, it works really well on a population basis. If you take like thousands of people, mm -hmm. you are probably doing a good job at preventing heart attack, stroke, and death. But on the individual basis, there's an argument to be made say, look, doc, you know, I think, I, I realize that you just did my Framingham risk score. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, I might be at medium risk, for instance, but how do I know I'm at risk? And that's where coronary artery calcium scoring comes into play. And we talk about this with, with surgery and infection, because I tell you, oh, the risk is 1%. But if you get infected, you get 100% infected. You don't get 1% infected. So you might be someone that falls out of that average, and you might have unique characteristics that, that make this test potentially more useful for you. Right. Okay. I find this important, because I have this battle with my family doctor all the time, because my cholesterol is a little bit high, and he's just obsessed with getting it down below a number. I'm like, yeah. it's good enough. It's close enough. Right. But I, I mean, something that's more personalized like this, I think I would really uh, appreciate it. And I think there's an appeal to that. And we know that the risk scores are not perfect. And there are a whole variety of different risk scores. I mentioned the Framingham risk score. And it's People, confusing. Like if you ever try and tease through yeah. it, it is really confusing. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and we know that you know, it, it categorizes a lot of people fairly well, but we know it underestimates risk and it overestimates risk in right. particular individuals. So that leads to coronary artery calcium scoring. This is not a new thing. Okay. So this has been around for more than 20 years. There were some good data that came out of the United States, Germany, the Netherlands, and said, look, if you do a CAT scan mm -hmm. of the heart, and just look at the coronary arteries in a kind of rather crude way and score how much calcium is sitting on the coronary arteries that can predict risk okay, in so, an individual. So a CT scan is when you go inside that tube and it takes pictures, slices of your body, and what it can see in your vessels and in your heart is how white they are and that's abnormal. So a normal vessel you should not be able to see white in your vessels and as that calcium is deposited, you can see that in those pictures. Right, Okay. and, and, and the technique's gotten a lot better as yes. time has gone on. Um, and so you can grade that calcium scoring. Okay. And so you might have a score of zero, okay. and we'll talk about zero in a little okay. bit, but zero, zero is good. Mm -hmm. Zero means you're at low risk. It doesn't mean you're at zero risk. Right. Okay. Not on a uh, test, but in this case, it's not bad. Right. Um, a score of more than 100. Now, these are artificial numbers, I understand. Radiologists are familiar with these numbers. Right. Um, so a score of more than 100 means you're at higher risk. Right. Risk of about maybe 
two to three percent um, per year to, of having a okay. heart event, heart attack, stroke, for instance. Okay. Um, for us, that's high risk. Sure. And then a score of more than like 350, 400 is very high risk. Ooh. Okay, so so we can do these tests. People worry about the radiation a little bit sometimes. Right. Um, and so if you think about all the radiation that you might get just walking around outside over the course of a year, that's a three millisieverts. Um, and a typical CAT scan for coronary artery calcium scoring is 0 0.8. Okay, so, so still low. Low. Yeah. Okay, okay so uh, the plus of this sort of technology is that it can give you another indication of risk of a coronary event, which is good. We're always talking about prevention, right? Preventative medicine is always better than reacting to a disease once you've already got it. If you can prevent it, that's better. So that's great. What are some of the downsides that you perceive, some of the, some of the negative sort of things associated with this test? Any problems that you can so imagine? No, no real problems other than, you know, just availability. Okay. So, you so know, I know you, issue. you've got you've got viewers all around the world, yes. right? Yeah. I think in the United States it'd be probably pretty readily available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in other countries, Canada for instance, availability is less uh, less easy um, and, and probably elsewhere in the world that that holds true as well. Right. Um, radiation exposure is low, okay. um, and uh, not, a, not a lot of downsides, and you get your personalized results. So you get an idea then, so let's say you're abnormal. Okay. So <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So you started there. there. Yeah, wow. You know, it's so, not a stretch. No, it's going to be a long day for me today. Um, so you're abnormal, Brad. Okay. And so what's the downside? Mm -hmm. Well, I tell Brad, you know, your score's 100. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and you know what I do now? I worry. Mm -hmm. Now right. I might worry. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, it's a sort of Damocles hanging over your right. over your head. And so it's like, okay, your score's 100, let's right. reduce your risk. Right. And what am I gonna do? I'm gonna prescribe a cholesterol pill. Okay, so, even, so oh. how, what, what if I have though, what if I have a score of 100 yeah. and my cholesterol is normal? Uh, unlikely. Okay, so, yeah. so, uh, okay, so th these all kind of go together. They all go together. Okay, so, yeah. so say I'm a little bit unfit. Thankfully, I'm not a smoker, but if I was, obviously, you tell me to quit smoking. Yep. If I'm inactive, you tell me to exercise. Right. And if I have high cholesterol, that's one of our modifiable risk factors. You're going to get me on some medication to try to get me down. If you have a family history, change your family. Change yeah. your family. Okay. okay. Control your blood pressure. Okay. Control exercise. You mentioned exercise regularly. If you have diabetes, make sure it's well controlled. Okay. Here is the million dollar question. Is it reversible? So Brad came in at 100 because he's been eating hot dogs and smoking darts yep. all day. He fixes up his lifestyle, heavy into kale. Gets off yes, the chicken I, wings. Which I am. Can he bring that score down? Or are those calcium deposits there for life? So that's a fantastic question. Um, that that leads to a, a, a bit of a rabbit hole. Rabbit hole, Paul. Okay. Number okay, one, let's jump in. Maybe. Number one, no indication to do repeat calcium scoring. Okay. Once you get the answer, you know where your risk is. Okay. So, and in fact, if you have a score, uh, I, your number might go up. Um, right. So you have a score of 100, yeah. but there's a lot of soft plaque in there right. that the CAT scan's mm -hmm. never gonna find. Okay. I treat you, and now the soft plaque gets stabilized okay. and it becomes calcified. Right. And ironically, the score might go up, but your risk goes down. Right. Um, so to answer your question, so I wouldn't do repeat calcium scoring, okay. but we know that if we can get, I'm gonna use Canadian units here, now millimoles per liter, yep. mm -hmm. if you can get the LDL down around 1.4, 1.3, I think in SI units, it might be um, for our American viewers, maybe around 60 or 70. Okay. If you get down into that range, then we know there's plaque regression. Right, regression. Regression, so it can go away. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that because we've done a number of studies where we actually put angiograms and tubes right into the catheters, oh, uh, wow. right into the coronary arteries, yep. and uh, and check 18 months later after good treatment. It's like, oh, look at that. There's less oh, plaque. Wow. Okay. Oh, it's hard to get down that low in the LDL. You know what I mean? Not now. Really, with yeah, medication? Not now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Killing the, our viewers uh, not gonna like this. No. No, and and that's okay. So, a uh, quick question uh, about the score: Is it more useful for people that have no symptoms and such a really low risk, as like a hey, where am I sitting? Or is it more like I think I read that if you have disease or if you have a high family history, you've maybe even had an event, right. it really plays not much of a role at all, right? Once you have established disease, it's not useful. Correct. Okay. You're gonna so, get treated anyways. Right. right. Correct. And and people ask for that. Right. And you know, somebody who's had a previous bypass, they say, right. hey. Doc, can you do my coronary artery calcium score? It's like, no, that's a waste of time. Yeah, because yeah. you're on this already. Yeah, right. So it's it's useless for high risk. Right. People under the age of 40 with no risk and no symptoms. Also not useful. Also generally not useful. Okay. 
um, unless, and, and then it's the intermediate risk. Okay. So it's the people over the age of 40, maybe with some other risk factors. That's probably where the real sweet spot is for this. Okay. Um, in the United States, you have access to pay for it. So often I estimated on the internet that the cost range is between $100 and $700. So it's not a cheap test. So this is access is going to be a problem for people and it's yeah. not covered by many insurance plans. And that's what makes it a complicated test to know when to order. So yeah. is the average cardiologist going to order this test? If you're 50 and you come in and say you have one or two risk factors, is this, is this where they're going to go? Or is it more when they're like, oh, I'm not really sure what your risk is. I want one more piece of information. Yeah. So it's, it's the, I'm not really sure. Yeah. You know, ultimately is, do I need to prescribe a medication to reduce your risk or not? Usually it's a statin or a non-statin. And it's like, you know what? You're sitting in, in the mid-range. We yep. just need that little extra piece of information. Um, let's get that. Okay, $2 million question. Yeah. You probably already have done your own blood work and checked your own risk. Would you have the, a cardiologist, would you have the test done to yourself? Yep, so if I'm intermediate risk, I don't yeah. know. It's a decision between between being on medication or not on medication, mm -hmm. I think it's a fairly simple test to do. There you go. Okay. There you heard it. That's a good answer. And then last one that I'm going to ask is if my cholesterol is off the charts yep. and my calcium score is zero, I've had a lot of people comment in the comments to say that, hey, I have no risk. I'm not taking cholesterol medication. I got perfectly clean arteries. My score is zero. Why would I possibly take this medication that has some well, associated? It's not a common scenario to be in where you right? have but, that situation. Well, but but, I, but it, it's but common it in happen. the comments. But yes, I think you're right. It, it does happen. Actually, I, I have a CAT scan signal on my desk uh, virtually that somebody did uh, a week ago. Okay. Coronary artery calcium score is zero, middle-aged man. Yep. Um, but the radiologist commented about, hey, there's a fair amount of soft plaque here okay. in the left main coronary artery, the widow maker, mm. and the LAD, okay. the left anterior descending artery. So the coronary artery calcium score is zero, but this fellow has got plaque in, okay. in, 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 in particularly a significant artery. There's going to be an argument when I have this discussion with them, you need to be on therapy to reduce right. this risk. You're right. Eventually, that soft plaque is going to be hard plaque. Okay. And that's what our bodies do to stabilize. Like why? That's why we put calcium into these yep. plaques. It's like a response to the inflammation and the plaque deposition to stabilize it. Right. Okay. It's funny that they don't grade the soft plaque. Probably just more difficult to visualize using x-rays yep. or, yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow, there you go. So we, learned a couple, we learned a bunch of things today. One, I'm abnormal. Two, we learned about the calcium score and that it is a useful test but not in isolation and this is not going to be the only test that's going to determine your treatment. So have an open discussion with your doctor and please listen to them and proceed with caution. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. Dr. Heffernan, thank you so much. <laughs> My pleasure as always, guys. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.